Secret World of Arietti is a film written and planned by Hayao Miyazaki. Uh, but it is not directed by Hayao Miyazaki this time. It is, um, it's not directed by Hayao Miyazaki this time. It's directed by Hiro, Hiromasa Yonebayashi. Hiromasa Yonebayashi. Forgive me if I have gotten that incorrect. But this is interesting because it's, it's based on the book series, The Borrowers. The book, The Borrowers, which is about, like, uh, you know, a bunch of little people. And they run around collecting stuff from uh, from humans without, and they need to make sure that they're not seen because then they can get caught or killed or anything like that. And so they're like these little tiny people, and they just run around doing stuff. And they live in the walls and the floors of an English house, and they borrow from the big people in order to survive, according to Wikipedia. I remember reading the book as a kid. It's been a long time. I didn't know that there was a. Uh, I, I knew that there was like a live action movie where the borrowers had tails for some reason. Um, I don't know if that was in the book. It's been a, such a long time since I've read it. I'll have to go back and... But this movie is a an animated adaptation of The Borrowers, and it is absolutely such a beautiful film. Uh, it's very low stakes. Um, it's not like some big uh it's not some big you know emotional magical drama like uh like spirited away or or ponyo or any of the other studio ghibli films this one it just takes place in one area and it's a very very small area it's um you know we're, we're stuck with the entire cast at this this single house this english house and you would think that because of this that we would be feeling very claustrophobic because, you know, oh, we're stuck in one setting for the whole film where you're just going to get boring. But no, like, it's really interesting because these characters are so tiny, they're able to make the world around them, this house, feel bigger and bigger than ever before in comparison. There's this, like, amazing scene where they're going and they're going to borrow stuff from the kitchen. And so... They go, and it's, like, just absolutely huge. Like, to them, it's, like, miles long. And so they have to take these giant treks over the tile floors in order to get a piece of sugar. And then they have to sneak across this wall in order to get tissue paper. And it's just, it's it's beautifully portrayed, and it really shows you a sense of scale and scope um, when it comes to these characters. Uh, and so the story is that, like, uh, the borrowers live in this English home, and then one week, this boy who is about to get heart surgery uh, comes to visit so he can rest up before he goes to the surgery. And there's two dubs of this movie in English. There's the American dub, and then there's the uh, the UK dub, which stars Tom Holland as the boy. Um, I first saw this film with the US dub, and so that's how I'm used to watching it. It's really weird going and watching two different English dubs of the same thing. It's like going to a it's like going to a theater, like a live theater, and you see the same musical but two different casts put it on. So you go, let's say you go to see Hamilton, and Hamilton is played by Lin Manuel Miranda in the first performance that you go to see. And then you come back like a week later and Lin Manuel Miranda is out sick, and so now uh, Hamilton is played by the understudy uh, Javier Munoz, Mun Munoz. And so it's it's a it's very different. Like you know, it's the same character, but it doesn't feel quite the same because it's a different actor. And like it, it's like it's like watching a completely different film entirely. Um, you're getting two different theatrical experiences, two different performances, and I think that's really cool that we have the option to watch movies where that is possible, where you can go and be like, okay, I'm gonna watch this in English, but I'm gonna watch it as it was recorded in the UK. And then later you're like, that was pretty good. I wonder what it was like for the US dub. And then you go and watch it and you're like, wow, that was like really, really neat getting to see those two different performances back to back. So I think that's really cool. Tom Holland uh, does a good job as the character of the boy. I think the boy's name is Sean or something like that. But like, so Sean is resting at this house and he discovers the borrowers and the borrowers cannot be spotted by humans because then they would be put in danger, they'd be captured or killed, 
or stepped on or, or worse. And so, you know, Tom Holland isn't hostile at all. He really likes the borrowers and he wants to get to know them more, but it's not safe for them to stay there. Um, there's this like really weird lady. I don't know if she's like the housemate or what, but she keeps going to try and get the borrowers killed for like no reason. Like this character is just two dimensionally just like, I'm evil. Ooh, I'm going to call an exterminator and exterminate the borrowers. Wahaha. And it's like, but why though? Why? 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 It's established that this family really loves the idea of the borrowers. They even, like, the mom of this kid even built, like, a like a house with, like, a fully functional oven and electricity and all sorts of stuff so that the borrowers can, like, live there in luxury if they wanted to. And, like, you know, this housemaid knows that the borrowers are very important to this family. But she's like, nah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kill him. I'm gonna kill, let's, let's kill him. Screw him all. We're gonna kill him. Why? Why are you like that? Why you gotta, why you gotta do that? You know, that doesn't, that doesn't make any sense. And so the big conflict of the film is that, like, um, the housemaid finds the borrowers, kidnaps the mother, and then sticks her in a jar. Hi, Mrs. Neutron. And then, uh, she's gonna call the exterminator and have the other two wiped out. And so, um... Sean helps Arietti to rescue the mom and then uh, they get out of there and they leave and they say goodbye to Sean and they leave and that's the end of the movie. Um, we do, there it's just it's left open-ended. So you know you, you remember me mentioning that the boy has to have heart surgery. Does the boy survive? We don't know. Uh, in the I think in the Disney dub they make it very obvious that he does survive because he has like an ending narration where he talks about it. Um, but then, uh, you know, in the, in the UK dub, uh, they just, they just leave and it like pans out and it's completely silent and that's it. We don't know if Sean survived. We don't know if he died. We really don't know what happened. Um, but then Sean has narration at the beginning of the movie. So maybe he did survive. Um, I think it's really cool that like the ending is left more ambiguous and open because then it's up to the audience to decide, um, what they think happened to Sean. And that can make it a very bittersweet viewing experience. Um, so yeah, it's one of the lesser known Studio Ghibli films, but I would still highly recommend it. It's it's a nice change of pace. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a palate cleanser. Instead of all this magic, you know, it's just this very realistic, grounded tone. And it's it's just, it's nice. You know, it's, it's like the, the whole theme of the like movie centers around this little tiny cottage and this beautiful garden and these borrowers who like live their lives um, trying to make their way through this giant house. And it's just, it's very relaxing to watch. Uh, I don't really, I don't really have anything complicated to say about it. I just think it's a really nice, it's a really neat film. You know, this video is unscripted. If you couldn't tell, I'm going out of town for Thanksgiving next week and I have to get some repairs done on my computer. And uh, I don't know how long that's going to take. So I'm getting a bunch of videos done this weekend uh, before I go. Uh, but yeah, you know, Arietti, Secret World of Arietti is really good. Uh, I want to see if I can get my parents to watch it. Because I know, like, my mom uh, likes the Borrower's book, probably. I'm pretty sure at one point. I think she's the one who read it to me when I was a kid. I honestly don't remember. But I want to, like, show this movie to them just because, you know, it, it's rated G, it's low stakes, it's, you know, it's very family friendly. It's a pretty good movie. Uh, I'm going to give it, like, a like a 9 out of 10. Um, it drags in some places, but it's fairly short. Uh, so, you know, it, it's very enjoyable viewing experience. So go check it out if you haven't yet. Uh, it's streaming on HBO Max, and I'll put a link to that down in the description below. Um, but yeah, uh, and then before you go, some follow-up news. Uh, Reese has returned to Movie Force. Yes, our boy is back with us, and I'm super excited. Uh, we're going to be working on some projects here uh, in the coming weeks. Um, while I have my computer in repair, I don't know how long that's going to be. Um, I think Reese is going to work on a couple Reese Box episodes, so who knows when those are going to come out, but they are coming, rest assured. And uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe, and uh, have a great day.